principal of Zakir Hussain College of Engineering and Technology that is at AMU, uh, Janab Professor M. M. Sufyan Beg Sahab, who is also the alumni cell in charge of the university. And that is why the, the AMU community internationally know him in this way also. But yes, his first introduction is a man of science and a man of technology. Uh, we have planned a five day series and we have planned this whole science festember, we have called it. So I now invite our anchor, Bhari Sai Vallika, to start the proceedings formally. Bhari Sai Vallika, please. Thank you so much, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Science is a way of thinking much more than it is a body of knowledge, said Carl Sagan, the famous astronomer and cosmologist, and rightly so. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Vallika, and I'm your host for this evening. Our esteemed chief guest, Professor M.M. M. Sufyan Bey, respected principal sir, Dr. Mohammad Riaz, Dr. S. M. Yahya Ibrahim, convener Spark, teachers and students. I extend a hearty welcome to all to this inaugural session of Science Festember, brewing with scientific temperament. This Science Festember is an initiative by the Science Club of Society for Promotion of Art and Culture, Spark, Kareem City College to celebrate the World Science Day for Peace and Development. The Science Club not only aims to provide young inquisitive minds a platform to express themselves, but also to open up opportunities for them by conducting guest lectures, seminars, quizzes, workshops, exhibitions, and many more. And Science Festival is a step forward in this direction. Moving on, I consider this my privilege to introduce our chief guest for this evening, Professor M. M. Sufyan Bey. He is the chairman of Department of Engineering and Technology at Aligarh Muslim University and also the principal of Zakir Hussain College of Engineering and Technology, AMU. He is an alumnus of IIT Kanpur 1994 batch in NTech Microelectronics, and he also completed his PhD IIT Delhi in 2004 in computer technology. He has published a book, 29 book chapters, and has 165 research papers to his name. His topics include web mining and soft computing. Apart from being invited as a guest lecturer in countries like USA, UK, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and India, he has served as a reviewer and has been on the board of many journals and conferences of repute. Sir, this is our extreme honor to have you amongst us today. Now, I request our principal, sir, Dr. Mohammad Riyaz, to please welcome our chief guest. Sir, over Thank to you. you. Thank you, Varun. Well. M.M. Sufyan Beg, principal, Zakir Hussain College of Engineering and Technology, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Dr. Faiza Abbasi, Director HRDC, Aligarh Muslim, Muslim University, Aligarh. Mentor, mentor of this program, Dr. Muhammad Moeed Ashraf, Convener of the program, ISPARC, Dr. S.M. Yahya Ibrahim, all faculty members, and my dear students. I welcome all of you in six days program on International Science Day for peace and development. I especially welcome Professor M.M. M. Sufyan Beg, 
despite having a very busy schedule have he give us his valuable time today he is in here with us to inaugurate the program and address the virtual gathering your presence is definitely a great motivation and encouragement to us sir those persons for another day dr mohammad uh, dr faiza abbasi who is joining us from aligarh muslim university aligarh to share her expertise knowledge with our students and faculty members i am sure a student will be highly benefited from her session i also welcome the faculty members and students across the discipline participating in this program your overwhelming response to attend the has given us great enthusiasm to do more such programs i also welcome srishti kumari ex student nafis mustafa just past all student and crown of karim city college pride of karim city college jamshed khan alumni of karim city college for their valuable contribution as the head of the institution i especially congratulate to team members of his park society for promotion of art and culture and and mohammad moeed ashraf mentor of the program for organizing six days program on international science day for peace and development for the benefit of the students at a large once again i welcome all of you and express my sincere gratitude for your warm presence especially professor mm sufyan beg sir and the resource person thank you thank you very much to all thank you sir now i humbly request our chief guest professor mm sufyan beg to kindly declare the science fest chamber open sir i i declare the science week open open thank you so much sir thank you sir thank this science fest chamber is a five day long event starting today with the lecture on science and peace by professor mn sufyan beg tomorrow that is on 11th of november we have a talk on science and pandemic by dr mohammad moiz ashraf convener science club coming up on 12th we have an interesting book talk on science fiction by shrishti kumari our ex student and ex cos spark on 13th we shall have dr faiza abbasi amongst us sharing her views on science and our life she is the director hrdc amu and not only this 14th november is reserved for a talk on a sci-fi movie by nafis mustafa ex student and ex cultural secretary spark last but definitely not the least we have on 15th jamshed khan an alumnus of karim city college who recently qualified for the isro so it's a request to everyone attending this session to kindly mark the dates and stay tuned as there's lot to happen in the upcoming days also after every day session we shall have a question answer session following the talk by the speaker so even today after professor beg finishes his lecture we shall be looking forward to audience's questions so moving on and starting today's session which i am sure is filled with enthusiasm and curiosity i would now like to invite professor m n sufyan beg to present his lecture on the topic <coughs> science and peace over to you sir Uh, thank you very much i'm really honored and privileged to be the chief guest at the inaugural function of 
the science week that the college is organizing <clears throat> in fact the topic that is given to me is really interesting science and peace and i had to do some hard thinking to come up with some of the points that i am going to present before you and i'll be requesting you to ponder over those points because this to me is a very interesting topic science and peace so i have put a few slides together i would like to share those slides just let me uh, just just hold on a minute let me share those slides can somebody tell me if uh, my slides are available uh, are are visible can you see my slides no sir no, no sir it is not visible no sir no sir not yet okay just hold on let me see okay okay it should be visible now is it yes sir i've put it in this slide show i've put it in this slide show so i hope it is visible yeah okay so as i said that we are going to talk about signs and peace you have already graciously introduced me so i need not tell anything about myself now the very word science it brings to our mind something that is going to make our life easier and very certainly it should not be making our life difficult now this goal of making our life easier and not difficult by virtue of having a scientific approach or a scientific outlook may only be possible if we have sincerity of intention because it is said that the very intention is going to decide about the outcome of our deeds as we say in urdu amal ka daro madar niyat ke upar hai whatever we do the outcome of it will be dependent on the intention that is there behind it i'll give a very basic example suppose you take the example of a knife a knife may be used either way you can use a knife to cut the apple into pieces and place it before your guest you can use the knife to cut the vegetables to prepare a sumptuous dinner or if this knife falls into the hands of somebody who has got a bad intention this knife god forbid may be used for killing anybody or injuring anybody so the the article the knife remains the same it is the intention of the user that decides what is that going to be used for in much the same way science is primarily intended to benefit the humanity but unfortunately some of the people may have used science previously in ways that is going to harm the humanity more than benefiting them so in this lecture today we are going to explore the ways and means by which we can use science to benefit the mankind at large and for the peace to prevail in the entire world now another question that is quite often asked is science creating imbalance in nature all the environmental hazards that we see around us it appears that the these hazards have primarily emerged or primarily they have uh, come into being because of the use of science for example the use of plastics that is really destroying the planet earth and that is a result of the scientific discovery but if we look back 
plastic was not meant to harm us it was meant to benefit us so the fact remains the same we overdo things that is what harm us and we all know that excess of everything is bad so we may have used science in ways that may have created imbalance in nature but that was not the primary intention of developing the subject of science education brings peace we all know that so does science education science education is no different from the general education that is a special case of education in fact so if education brings more cultured people more peaceful society then science obviously is going to further the cause of education and bring more peace and bring more subtleness and bring more comfort in the lives of the people now with this introduction let me move on to a very famous person of science i won't say the most famous person but definitely a very famous person alfred nobel why i'm calling him famous because it is after him that the nobel prizes are being awarded every year so we have to take a lesson from his life he was born in 1833 passed away in 1896 he had 63 years of life he was a swedish chemist an engineer an inventor a businessman and philanthropist he was best known for having bequeathed his fortune to establish the nobel prize as i mentioned just now now all of us have to ponder how did he make up this fortune several important contributions are attributed to him because he has done those inventions in his short life i'll say 63 years is not a very long life and he holds 355 patents to his credit so he was an inventor to the core most in famous invention of all these 355 patents was the dynamite primarily primarily it was harnessing the explosive power of nitroglycerin and it was patented in 1867 it was primarily used worldwide for mining and infrastructure development you go to hilly areas in one of the inspections we went to a hilly area and we heard huge explosions so we were told that this is the dynamite which is blowing up the mountains in order to create a space for uh, you know bringing up the buildings and doing the development work in the area otherwise those barren uh, mountains were like were making life difficult for the people so he primarily invented dynamite for the benefit of the humanity but it happened it so happened that this dynamite was used in the world war and there there came out an erroneous obituary condemning him as a war profiteer his dynamite was sold so much for the war that he made a huge fortune so in order to undo things that had happened unintentionally he bequeathed his fortune to the nobel prize institution it is annually recognizing those who conferred the greatest benefit to human kind so we have a lesson from the life of alfred nobel he invented dynamite he was an inventor he invented dynamite with a good intention but the warring groups used his product for a bad intention he made a good fortune out of that and then he invested it again for a good purpose for the institution of the nobel prize most notably he was owning a lot of companies companies owned by alfred nobel most nob notably owning bofors some of you may have heard about the word very uh, the very word bofors an iron and steel producer that he developed into a major manufacturer of cannons and other armaments we also had a scandal of bofors in our country the synthetic element nobelium was named after him 
His name and legacy also survives in companies such as Dynamite Nobel and Axo Nobel, which descended from mergers with companies he founded. He was a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. He was responsible for choosing this academy is responsible for choosing the Nobel laureates in physics and in chemistry. So what is the conclusion from the life of Alfred Nobel? From science to war to award. Science, it led to an invention, dynamite, which was misused in the war. But the fortune that came out of it was invested to hand over and encourage and reward the people who are carrying out inventions for the benefit of mankind at large. So that is the lesson we get from Alfred Nobel. How can we convert science into peace? Even though there may have been an aspersion of science being used for the warring groups. So that was about the life of Alfred Nobel and the lesson we get from it. Another person that I'm going to talk about is the very founder of the Aligarh Muslim University, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. He was born in 1817 and breathed his last in 1898. His name was Sayyid Ahmad. His title was Sir and Khan Bahadur. Born on October 17, 1817 and breathed his last on March 27, 1898. He was a, a child of extraordinary health. In his boyhood days, he had slapped one of his servants. And his mother told him that I'm not going to talk to you until and unless you apologize to that servant. Obviously, it was very difficult for a child to apologize to a servant. But his Mother simply refused to speak to him unless he apologizes. And he had to apologize to his servant. A lesson got embedded in his mind that you have to treat every human being with respect. He started his career as a civil servant in the British rule. Now, this was a brief, brief biography. What is the lesson? The very revolt of 1857, Sir Sayyid had a very positive role. It was one of the turning points of Sayyid Ahmad's life. Even though he was an employee of the British government, he wrote a book, Asbabe Bagavate Hind, The Causes of the Indian Revolt, in which he squarely blamed the very employers the British rulers, he had the courage to stand up and say that, look, the fault of the revolt is not on our side, is not on the side of the Indian masses. It is more on the side of the British government, your policies. He rejected the common notion that the conspiracy was planned by Muslim elites. He instead, he blamed the British East India Company for its aggressive expansion as well as the ignorance of British politicians regarding Indian culture. We all know we have read history. It, it, prim it primarily got triggered because they had to cut the, uh, you know, uh, the bullet. They have, they have to bite the bullet by their teeth before putting it in the gun. Obviously, Hindus, Muslims both didn't like it because the grease was made up of Indian, uh, of the animal uh, fat. So he said that, look, the fault is on your side. You had been insensitive to the feeling of the Indian people. And that is why this revolt has occurred. So he had that courage to stand against his very employer. That is the lesson we get from him. And then there was this Sir William Muir who wrote a book in which he uh, criticized the very prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, Sir Sayyid replied him in a very subtle way. Sir Sayyid sold all his belongings and traveled to England to respond to the criticism of our Prophet by William Muir. 
Over there, after reading the books available in the British libraries, he wrote a series of essays on the life of Muhammad. He answered a number of Muir's criticisms in those series of essays, which were later published as khutbat e ahmadiyya So the second lesson, how to respond to the people who are hell-bent on hurting you in your beliefs or in your feelings or in your attitude. This is the lesson number two that we get from Sir Sayyid. Instead of getting into a conflict, we have to learn how to solve our problems in a peaceful way. While there in England, Sir Sayyid observed Oxford and Cambridge, and he started dreaming about Oxford of the East. And that is one of the reasons why out of 38 different types of arches worldwide, 20 are at the Aligarh Muslim University, as has been brought out in a book written by a faculty member of architecture from our university. So Indian masses were dead against the British culture. They did not want to study English and acquire modern education. Sir Sayyid stood up against his own people. He denounced this very idea that we don't have to study English, we don't have to have scientific approach. Just to give you a glimpse to those who haven't uh, visited Aligarh Muslim University ever, this is a picture not from England. This is a picture from the Aligarh Muslim University, the very stretchy hall. So the point that I was trying to say, it wished Oxford the East and he replicated it here. This is the stretchy hall at the Aligarh Muslim University. This is the Jama Masjid and the accompanying buildings of the Aligarh Muslim University. This is the aerial view in which the Jama Masjid stands tall and there is this cricket ground and then we have the astroturf of hockey. So a very good mixture of different, you know, uh, different approaches that are being followed in the university. Liberalism, religion, uh, being religious, being forward-looking, having a scientific outlook, and so forth. This is the famous Victoria Gate, once again, not from England, but from the Aligarh Muslim University. Even Akbar Ilahabadi, who was a contemporary of Sir Sayyid, he opposed Sir Sayyid tooth and nail. He was an Indian Urdu poet for satire. He was painful about the community, but opposed Sir Sayyid tooth and nail, initially. But later, he started saying that Hamari baate hi baate thi, Sayyid kaam karta tha. He also came to acknowledge the efforts of Sir Sayyid. Even though he was so critical, he wrote a poem when his son went to England. He was so much pain, Akbar Ilahabadi, that he wrote a poem. Ishrati ghar ki mohabbat ka maza bhool gaye, kha ke London ki hawa ahde wafa bhool gaye, pohunche hotel mein to phir Eid ki parwa na rahi, Chakke kek sivayyon ka maza bhool gaye. Like that, you know. Mom ki putliyon par aisi tabiyat pigli, chamane hind ki pariyon ki ada bhool gaye. So he was critical of his own son for having gone to England to acquire modern education. But Sir Sayyid quietly went on doing the great work of making his fiercest opponents and enemies into his friends. To the extent that the very Akbar Ilahabadi later said, Hamari baate hi baate thi, Sayyid kaam karta tha. So this is lesson number three from the life of Sir Sayyid. Instead of getting into a quarrel, how do you turn your enemies, how, you how do you turn your foes into friends? Countering opposition. That is another good trait of a person who loves peace. Counting. How do you counter opposition? There will be opposition all around. If you stand up for doing anything good, there will be opposition all around. He was issues, he was issued against him fatwas, you know, religious uh, decisions against him of kufr and ilhad that he has turned a non-believer. People hurled shoes at him when he went on to gather money to build the university. Sir Sayyid did not mind it at, at all. He gathered all those shoes, sold it to a shoemaker, and whatever little money he got, he made a receipt out of that and handed it over to, to the person who had hurled shoes of, at him. At one place, he went to gather the money for the university and people, they mocked at him and, he, and they said, even though Sasayir had a flowing beard, and that is the reason why I put his picture in the beginning. 
पीपल टोल्ड हिम कि अगर आप मुजरा करके दिखाएं तो हम आपको पैसे दे सकते हैं सो फॉर द कॉज ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर द कॉज ऑफ एजुकेशन फॉर द कॉज ऑफ साइंटिफिक टेम्परमेंट सर सैयद वेन डाउन टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ पुटिंग घुगरू घुंगरूज इन इज फीट एंड मुजरा किया और उनसे पैसे लिए एंड हैंडेड ओवर द रिसीव टू दैम sons of nawab would come to study with their horses and stables were built for them so he had that level of tolerance in order to uh, to to make the peace prevail all around and this is his famous uh, statement in which he said i want such graduates to emerge from this university who have science in one hand philosophy in the other and the crown of kalima on their foreheads so he had that scientific and mind it sir sayed himself was a law graduate but he had this scientific temperament and that is why the multi dimensional personality of sir sayed made him write a book asarus sanadid which is a masterpiece of architecture even now people they cherish this book they value this book he established scientific society in 1863 for the dual purpose creating scientific temperament among the muslims to make the western knowledge available to the indians in their own language we're talking about the new education policy now that we have to teach our people in our own language sir sir you thought about it in 1863 itself to make the western knowledge available to indians in their own language so he he established the scientific society in 1863 he brought out the aligarh institute gazette which was an organ of the scientific society he started that in march 1866 in order to change the mindset of the people he brought out tahzeeb ul akhlaq tahzeeb ul akhlaq means how can you correct your attitude your dealings and you know, akhlaq ko kaise durust kiya jaye so those kinds of essays were there he even wrote down the commentary on the holy quran many people they criticize it but he said that i have written it for the non believers to have a feel of what quran is all about and how does it convey the message of peace to the masses before i proceed further let me give some of the quotes about sir sayed yesterday only we celebrated the urdu day on the very birth of sir allama iqbal he said about sir sayed The real greatness of the man Sir Syed consists in the fact that he was the first Indian Muslim who felt the need of a fresh orientation of Islam and worked for it. And then, <clears throat> our first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, founder Prime Minister of India, he said Sir Syed was an ardent reformer and he wanted to reconcile modern scientific thought with religion by rationalistic interpretations and not by attacking basic belief. he was anxious to push new education he was in no way communally separatist repeatedly he emphasized that religious differences should have no political and national significance words of jawaharlal nehru and then indra kumar gujral former prime minister of india he made a long you know comment on sir sayed's vision and his laborious efforts to meet the demands of challenging times are highly commendable the dark post 1857 era was indeed hopeless and only men like raja ram mohan roy and sir sayed could penetrate through its thick veil to visualize the nation's destinies they rightly believed that the past had its merits and its legacies were valuable but was the future that a society was called upon to cope with i offer my homage to sir sayed for his vision and courage that we withstood all obstructions both from the friends and the foes so once again how to have the peace prevailing all around by taking all the friends and the foes on your side and last but not the least mahatma gandhi the father of nation he said sir sayed was a prophet of education so of the highest you know <coughs> uh highest uh, homage paid to sir sayed in the words of mahatma gandhi so it is a secular university with islamic ethos it was established in 1877 as mo college 1920 it became the aliga muslim university the academic staff is 1350 non teaching staff is 5600 students are 28000 plus and also we boast of having from nursery education to postdoc 
So we have seven high schools, school for visually challenged, two senior secondary school boys and girls, 14 faculties with 102 teaching departments, 19 halls of residence with 80 hostels, and we've been accredited by NAC with A grade. So this is the brief history. 24th May 1875, Madhya Sattul Ulum founded, Muhammad Nagno Oriental College in 1877. 1920, Muslim University Bill passed. 9 September 1920, Aligarh Muslim University Bill passed. 14 September, Ascent of Governor General. 1st December, AMU established. And 17 December 1920, AMU inaugurated. So this is our history. We have proudly produced two Bharat Ratans and eight Padma Vibhushans. And we have produced around 27 Padma Bhushan awardees from our university and around 36 Padma Shri awardees. The Bharat Ratans that we have produced is the former president of India, Zakir Hussain, and Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, Frontier Gandhi. Likewise, we have produced Janan Peet awardees, Sahitya Academy awardees, several of them. We have produced several heads of states. Uh, besides uh, Dr. Zakir Hussain, who was the president of India, we have produced president of Maldives, prime minister of Pakistan, finance minister in the interim government headed by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, prime minister of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, ruler of princely state of Bhopal, chancellor chamber of Indian princes, president of Indian Republic, wife of Sharif Akhruddin Ali Ahmad, who was the president of India, Mrs. Abida Ahmed was also an alumna of the Aligarh Muslim University. Now, the point that I want you to ponder about is what are the relevance points of Sir Sayyid's uh, outlook? Firstly, I'm, I'm now connecting back to our topic, unity in diversity, which is a key to the peace prevailing all around. People, they have diverse minds. People, they have differ, diverse backgrounds, diverse thinkings, diverse religions, how can you have a unity in that diversity? Sir Sayyid gave that beautiful example that India is like a bride. One of its, one of, one of her eyes is, are the Hindus, the other eye are the Muslims. Both the eyes have to be healthy. If any one of the eyes that goes bad, the bride will look ugly. And if both the eyes are damaged, the beauty of the bride is gone. Likewise, if we have multiple cultures in our country, we have to safeguard all of them. Otherwise, this Indian bride will look ugly. That was the first relevance from his outlook. Second relevance, how to resolve conflict. Because it is only the conflict resolution that takes you to peace. So peace and conflict resolution are very much related terms. For that, he wrote an essay in Urdu, which was called Behs o Takrar, in which he gave the example of two dogs, two dogs sitting at a distance, then they stare at each other, and then little noises start coming out of their throats, and then they start barking at each other, and then they start a conflict and then they are into a fierce physical battle uh, with each other. So he wanted to say that the starting point of any conflict will be very minute, but then it may bl blow up into a full-fledged war or a full-fledged battle. So we have to cut it at the very first stage. Secondly, he said that fighting is meant for animals for dogs, and it is not befitting for the human beings to fight with each other. So he was an epitome of knowledge. The question before us is why not we have created or we have given birth to more Sar Sayyids? There is this famous couplet from Allama Iqbal, who, about whom I said that we, create, we celebrated his birthday yesterday. So it says, Safaya Dahir se batil ko mitaya kisne? No insa ko gulami se chudaya kisne? Mere kabe ko jabino se basaya kisne? Mere Quran ko sine se lagaya kisne? Te to aba wo tumare hi, makar tum kya ho? Hat par hat dare muntazire farda ho. Our forefathers may have done wonders, but what have we done? We are just sitting idle 
with our fingers crossed and hoping for the good things to come up, hoping for the good things to shape up. No, we have to create our destiny. We have to build our destiny. We have to put things in proper perspective. We'll have to take actions. Now, future directions at AMU. Our vision is a Nobel Prize at the Aligarh Muslim University. Some of you might laugh at that. I don't care. Because the words of the great Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam is, are very much sound in my ears. He said, our dream is not a dream unless people start calling you crazy about it. So why don't you dream of having a Nobel Prize at the at your college? Who stops you from dreaming? And also, Dr. ABJ Abdul Kalam said that a dream is not what you see while you are sleeping. A dream is what that doesn't let you sleep. So when I say that I have a vision, I have to have some action items. First and the foremost, in our colleges, we should have an annual description or a lecture on every Nobel Prize given that year. What work was the Nobel Prize in physics given this year? What work was the Nobel Prize in chemistry, in medicine, in literature, in peace, in economics given this year? At least let there be some motivation for our students. And then we have to have a three-dimensional approach. Number one, Science for science students. Yes, let me repeat. Science for science students. We have to study science the way it should be read. We are just studying science and memorizing it. We are not understanding the phenomena that is going behind it. We know the hows of it. We don't know the whys of it. We are not questioning ourselves. We are not having observation power. Right? So let there be science for science students. Likewise, let there be science for arts students. We have some very precious gems who are studying arts. If you introduce a little bit of scientific temperament to them, they can also produce wonders. Because these arts students, they have that gifted uh, craftsmanship. So they can build good models. They can create wonders, they can do innovations, they can do inventions. And then the third dimensional approach, one number one is science for science students and science for arts students and then science for madrasa students. Even the madrasa students, they have some very bright sparks there. So we have to work on them to bring them into the folds of science and in order to make them understand the scientific phenomena happening all around us. So when we do, do have a, a big vision before us, there will be other awards that will come on the way. When I explain vision to my students, I give them an example. We had a professor of mechanical engineering. He had an old Fiat car when we were students. Old, in those times, there were only Fiat car or the um, ambassador. These were the only two cars. So he had an old Fiat car. At the back of that car was a sticker which read, car at the back uh, the, the sticker at the back of a car which read when i grow up i want to be a rolls royce that was the vision of that car when i grow up i want to be a rolls royce so why can't all of us have a vision when i grow up i want to get a nobel prize for my country i want to get a nobel prize for my college let let us have a large vision before us and then we should have an outcome-based approach. We should be focusing on the outcome-based education. Again, I'll take the help of an example. If there is a farmer, you give him the best piece of land, the most fertile piece of land, give him the best seeds, give him the best manures, but the crop is not up to the mark. There's something fundamentally wrong. What matters the most for a farmer is the yield. Likewise, what kind of output or outcome we are getting from our colleges. We have to think about it. And my question to all of you is, have you ever thought why Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley? 
we talk so much about silicon valley but have we ever thought why silicon valley is silicon valley you may say that the climate is good you may say that it is convenient from the government so many conveniences are being provided from the government etc 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 but my answer to this question is silicon valley is silicon valley because stanford university and university of california at berkeley are there and i say this with all the authority at my disposal because i have spent a year as a post doctoral fellow at the university of california at berkeley i have seen them very closely life in the silicon valley revolves around these universities unfortunately in our country you go to a best institute an iit an iisc or a triple it outside the four walls of that institution a rickshaw puller a hawker doesn't know what this iit is all about so the benefits of our educational institutions are not percolating down to the masses so science is not helping the cause of the mankind or the community or the community or the community at large masses are not being benefited in the west it is just the opposite the very benefits of the scientific discoveries are coming down to the people they are benefiting out of it and that is the reason why they have developed an ecosystem around these two universities in the silicon valley the graduates of these university are uh, creating startups and those startups are turning into a success story the the famous story of google it was established by two phd students at stanford university they had developed a page rank algorithm and they came to know that a top industrialist is visiting their supervisor one day so they were standing outside the office of their supervisor with their laptops in their hands waiting for their industrialist to come out as soon as he came out while he walked from the office of their supervisor to his parking lot on the way they explained the page rank algorithm and impressed him so much that when he got into his car he pulled out his checkbook wrote a check for $100,000 handed it over to them and drove away now brin and page the two founders of google they say that for full two weeks we didn't know what to do with that check and that check kept lying in our drawers after two weeks we thought to start a company with the name google because only then the account could be opened and the check could be cashed and they formed a linux cluster started crawling the web started developing the web search algorithms and now they boast of the largest linux cluster in the world they are the best employer whosoever gets a job at google he says the, the director of research at google on his home page he says that do not offer me a job i have got a job at the best place and they have created such a such an ecosystem around them this is because of the scientific temperament and approach that they have you go to google apart from the salary they have done some wonderful things food is free you can gym you have got a gym there you have babysitting arrangements even you have laundry free of cost food is free gym is free laundry is free even you get you get your car serviced inside google so what they have done they have made you free of all the daily daily chores and they are using your time in the development of the company and in the development of the products they are the first ones to have developed a four day week they said that you will have a four day week you work four days for us on the fifth day you come to the company but do whatever you feel like we are not going to tell you what to work on the fifth day and many useful products have come out of the free thinking and development and inquiry on that fifth day so they have this out of box thinking ecosystem developing in that silicon valley as a result of these two universities similarly tesla car company the electric car company is there two very novel things in that company firstly the entire plant is in dark 
there is no visible light because everything is automated the robots are manufacturing the car so they work in infrared sensors they don't need the visible light so they are saving lot of power secondly it is such a compact plan they have done inch to inch pack packing because no human beings have to move around only the robots and the the the, the movement of the robots can be uh, very precisely uh, you know foretold for the human beings you have to keep a larger tolerance some somebody may be obese somebody may be throwing his hands around while walking and so forth so it's a very compact plant and it is doing lot of energy saving and it is working round the clock 24 hours production so some very good things they have done in the silicon valley and the credit goes to these two universities stanford and berkeley and that is the point i wanted to make this is the last message of the founder of the aligarh muslim university oh my children this is a very you know i would say that a very uh, emotional message oh my dear children you have reached a particular stage and remember one thing that when i undertook the task there was criticism all around against me abuses were hurled upon me life had become so difficult for me that i aged before my age such a powerful sentence i aged before my age i lost my hair my eyesight but not my vision my vision never dimmed my determination never failed i built this institution for you and i am sure you will carry the light of the institution far and wide till darkness disappears from all around a very powerful message of sir sayed so i hope i am making sense can somebody respond to me please yes sir okay okay now i'll 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 proceed further i'll try to take you into my areas since i am a professor of computer engineering again if you look at computers it is just a faithful servant an extremely faithful one though it won't inch or budge a little bit on either side it exactly works the way we instruct likewise for every machine every man made machine is a faithful servant the good or the bad will emerge out of it as we instruct that machine or the computer so if we instruct that computer or the machine to break piece it will break piece if you tell that machine or the computer to make piece it will make piece so the computers do not get fatigued they do not get bored the computers they do repetitive operations with no errors over and over and over again so that way they are just a faithful servant it is as dumb a device as any other device that you can think of and let me tell you a little joke here if there are two clocks one is non functional the other is running late by 5 minutes if you ask a computer which is better the computer will say that the one which is non functional is better than the one which is running late by 5 minutes because the non functional one will at least give you the correct time twice whereas the one which is running late by 5 minutes will never give give you the correct time so it was more on the lighter side but it exhibits the dumbness of a computer so if it is such a dumb machine how can you expect that machine or the computer to break piece unless you instruct it the way you want it to work so it is not the fault of science it is the fault of the human beings who use science to their advantage or use the science to harm others if you remember the very basic definition of machine machine is something which makes work easy simple definition you talk about lever you talk about pulley you talk about rocket or computers something as simple as a lever to something as complicated as a rocket or a supercomputer it has to make you work easy then the second stage of automation repeatedly doing one thing picking up objects from one place and keeping it at the other place repeatedly over and over and over again which are without getting fatigued or bored that is automation then comes programmability if you run one set of program 
it does the shifting of a job from one place to other. You change the program, it will change its work and so on. Then it is the self-decision making capability which is taking us towards artificial intelligence. That instead of you running up set of programs, let the computer decide on its own how far it has to pull the objects from here and put it there. And when it has to switch over from, for putting objects from here to this place. So this is what artificial intelligence is. Artificial intelligence, how close can we reach true intelligence? That means we are successful. Now, how do we inculcate this artificial intelligence in a computer? We build the intelligence into it. If we build the intelligence in a positive way, the computer will do positive actions. If we inculcate intelligence in a negative way, it will, it, it will produce negative results. There is this man-machine combination. You have to have a proper mix of man and machine. Howsoever small, the man component is a must. It has been proved that in a man-machine system, you just cannot eradicate the need of the man, which shows that it is the man who drives the machine. It is the man who makes the machine make peace. It is the man who makes the machine break peace. Again, on a lighter side, let me tell you a joke. The future office would have three things, a computer, a man, and a dog. The computer will do everything, right? The computer will do everything. The man, the dog will be there to keep a watch on the computer and the man will be there to feed the dog. So that is more on a lighter side. But again, you see, you cannot do away with the component of man in a man machine system. And when there is man, there is intention. And when there is intention, it invites sincerity of intention. If you have to create peace. What is the difference between a computer and a computer system? When you say just the hardware, it is computer. But with this hardware plus software plus user, that becomes computer system. This hardware is faithful, is harmless, is peaceful. It is the user and it is the software developed by the user that makes that computer beneficial or harmful. So the hardware and software, they are like body and soul. We all know that soul drives the body. A body is useless without a soul. So if the soul is good, the body will have good actions emerging out of it. If the soul is bad, there are bad actions coming out of the body. So a computer or a machine, when I say computer, you may uh, generalize it to any machine. It is the driver of the car who is going to drive it safely or who is going to uh, run it into a, into, into a handful of people, right? So it is not the science which is at fault. It is the user of science who is at fault. Operation of computers, for example, when you say 0000, zero, zero, zero it, it may mean just relax. 0001, zero, 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 it may mean take water. 10 may mean take juice. 0010 zero, zero, zero may mean take fruits. Likewise, you go on adding. For example, 0111, one, one, you can either say that make peace or you can use it to say uh, break peace. Right? The atom bomb was created, but it was the instruction which triggered the bomb. So you have this instruction is coming from man. You can have good actions or you can have bad actions. The machine will faithfully follow you. The internet, if you talk about internet, it is basically the network of computers and then interconnection of networks. Now, if there is one bad computer in the entire network, 
it will inject virus in the entire internet the intention is faulty otherwise internet was meant for good usage for sharing good data but people they have started hacking people have started phishing people have started doing all the ugly business on internet so the internet is not at fault the users who are using the internet they are at fault who talk about cloud computing who talk about internet of things and now they are talking about internet of everything i was visiting to my sister in law in houston texas usa we were out in a mall all of a sudden my 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 sister in law's husband his phone bell rang and it was a different tone i could make out it is a different tone i said why is the tone different he said somebody is ringing the bell of our house i said how come you are so far away he said let me see he switched on the 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 screen of his phone and there was a camera at the welcome uh, door of his house he could see there was a courier now there was a speaker at his house he could talk to that courier man through his phone over the internet of things and he could move the camera through his phone and then he could instruct the courier man to keep uh, the courier at the the packet at some safe place in the lawn of his house so internet of things have come to this stage now you take the ugly side of it the drones that we have made you can use that drones to fire the pistol at somebody you can use it to kill someone so science is not at fault you talk about grid computing and then you're talking about fog computing everything around you is computing in one way or the other how do you utilize it you talk about cloud computing infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service you start selling everything i may be having ms word uh license version i put it on sale you don't have to use the pirated version you use my my version because i am on the internet and you pay me money for that likewise i may be having extra storage you can use my storage to store your data so mobile backend as a service function as a service so you are putting everything on sale putting everything on sale there could be ethical sale there could be unethical sale i may start stealing your data i may start stealing your services so the system is not at fault i am at fault we are at fault human beings are at fault how can all problems be solved by computers not necessarily there are there are some computationally intensive problems for example the example of chess the inventor of chess when he presented the game of chess to the king of that time the king got very much amused you know it it rhymed with the liking of the kings that there is hathi ghoda piyada ladai you know so he got so much excited he said mango kya mangte ho now this person was really sharp he said not much there are 64 squares on the chess board you all know that there are 64 squares on the chess board you place one grain of rice in the first one two grains of rice in the second one four in the third eight on the fourth and so on and you fill it up fill up the uh, entire chess board the king said no problem i'll do it i'll do it but when they started calculating there will be approximately 2 to the power 64 grains of rice let me approximate it on the lower side let me put it 2 to the power 60 grains of rice we know a little bit of mathematics that 2 to the power 10 is 10 to the power 3 2 to the power 10 is precisely 1024 so let me approximate it on the lower side it is 1000 which is 10 to the power 3 so 2 to the power 60 when 2 to the power 10 is 10 to the power 3 so 2 to the power 60 will be approximately 10 to the power 
right? Ten to the power eighteen grains of rice. Make a wild guess. How many grains are there in a kg? Not more than a million. Which means ten to the power twelve kgs of rice. Which means ten to the power uh, nine tons of rice. A billion tons of rice is required in order to fill up this chest bowl. <coughs> so that talks about the computationally intensive problems all around so problem is not with the modeling we may not we, we may not be able to model our problem or we may come up with a wrong model that is where things go awry and that is where we run into a failure so intelligence is decision making and that decision making comes from our, from the database who provides this database human beings provide this database you have expert systems you learn from all around and then you have fuzzy logic and artificial neural networks you have nature inspired solutions for example genetic algorithm simulated annealing and colony optimization swarm intelligence see what is happening nature is providing you with lessons in science you look at these creatures small ants and you learn from them and solve your problems <coughs> so science is helping you to learn from everybody you have that long queue of ants they're not quarreling with each other they are cooperating with each other swarms they're not quarreling with each other they are cooperating with each other to do a bigger job so science if put together properly is going to help you make a better world for the human beings to live in uh let me give you a lesson here the probability that we talk about this is a very good tool for modeling let us understand what is probability is when i say that toss a coin and you get the head with a probability 0.5 and tail with probability 0.5 what does it mean if i toss the coin twice am i going to head twice and uh, uh, head ones and tail ones no then what does it mean if i toss it four times am i going to get head twice and tail twice no the point that we have to understand the concept that we have to understand is when it is the number of trials tending to infinity that the probability will emerge when we toss the coin infinite times only then half of it will be head half of it will be tail right again in order to make us understand probability tell me let me tell you a joke there was this doctor who was visited by a very chronic patient the doctor examined him and said that your disease is very critical and the chances of survival are 1 in 100 now this guy started crying 1 in 100 that is too low a probability doctor said look 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 i've got a good news for you he said what can be good news 1 in 100 that is too bad a news he said look in your case it is going to be a 100% failure a 100% success he said how can you be so sure he the doctor said that i have performed 99 operations before and all of them have died you are the 100th one so you are going definitely going to survive is that what probability means no that is abusing probability 1 in 100 means if infinite such operations are performed all over the world by different surgeons in different parts of the world in different seasons then 99% of them will die and 1% of them will live so we have to understand the tools of science and modeling and mathematics and statistics in order to create good models that are going to benefit the mankind at large so i may have to skip a few slides because i'm running out of time uh yes data mining can help us in creating peace we were visited by a professor from arizona state university and he said that we have done data mining and machine learning to learn from the history what creates conflict and what creates peace so he said we can mine the social media data by writing algorithms and learn from it whether the riot is going to break out or whether the peace is going to prevail 
so that can be done using data mining search for valuable information in large volumes of data just as we have mining of precious metals from the raw ore you can do uh, mining of precious patterns from raw data that is data mining and then you have massive open online courses through which you can learn how to use science to your advantage you can have learning management system in which by which you can measure actually measure how much learning has taken place and how much progress you have made in a positive way for learning science and technology a few words of advice for the students hone up your current skills look around learn unlearn relearn and that should continue till our last breath acquire new skill sets many resources are free books are made free an endless series of webinars happening a plethora of online lectures going around distressed helping other distressed people make the most of this opportunity don't get bogged down by the lockdown try to learn try to unlearn relearn keep learning manage your time set up your time table stick to your time table don't disturb your sleep cycle exercise well study and work time must be adhered to we should have a healthy eating habit and practice meditation yoga worship whatever you do please practice it very religiously these are a few tips for our students to have a healthy mind and a healthy body a healthy mind rests on a healthy body so we have to have a healthy mental uh, setup and a healthy physical setup in our body now this is the response that we gave to the pandemic using scientific inventions and discoveries kam qeemat ki machine bina chue haathon ko karegi sanitize science creating benefits for the mankind four way splitter on ventilator machine we devised we were running short of ventilators so we invented a four way splitter through one inverter we can through one ventilator we can use four patients and service four patients and treat them amu engineering college ne taiyar ki face shield this was developed by our uh, scientists and engineers डॉक्टरों को कोरोना संक्रमण से बचाएगा विशेष बॉक्स वी डिवाइज द बॉक्स लाइक दिस इन विच अ कोरोना पेशेंट मे बी मेड टू लाई डाउन एंड द डॉक्टर इज आइसोलेटेड वाइल एग्जामिनिंग हिम और हर सो साइंस बीइंग यूज फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ मैन काइंड एट लार्ज सो आई एंड बाय एन इंटरेस्टिंग कोर्ट फ्रॉम माई पोस्ट डॉक्टर सुपरवाइजर इट वॉज रिटन एट इज ऑफिस डोर Professor Lakhvi Zade, who was the father of fuzzy logic, Professor Emeritus at the University of California, Berkeley, USA, and he was I Triple E Medal of Honor awardee, which is like the Nobel Prize in engineering. So on his door, it was written: "In order to survive here, you have to kill yourself. In order to survive in this competitive world of scientific discoveries and inventions and innovations, and for the benefit of mankind." you have to work so hard that you almost have to kill yourself right if you are doing good people will oppose you tooth and nail because all around us evil is prevailing right now so in order to do away with the evil we have to stand up we have to take lessons from the life of the founder sir sayyid how to withstand the pressure and the testing times and still come out with flying colors using our scientific discoveries and inventions for the mankind thank you very much i took a little extra time but then i'll i'll invite questions now if there are any thank you so much sir it was it was very impressive and very enriching so i we can take some questions yes sure Ready? If anyone has uh, any sort of questions, they can either uh, 
switch on their mic and directly ask the questions or they can put it in the chat box anyone so maya you can uh, uh, switch on your mic and ask the question So Maya says, says today countries are in arm race competition. Do you hope that there will be advancement towards world peace? We have to hope against hope. If we lose hope, that is the end of the world. Let me tell you. Let me try to make get the positives out of it. That is what I personally feel. People may be buying arms, but then let us think that they are buying arms for the defense and not for the attack. i may be very well armed but if i am not attacking you know i am not harming anyone so let us have a strong defense system i don't uh, you know denounce that but then we should not be the first to attack anyone if all of us resolve that we are not going to be the first to attack there will be peace all around thank you sir you welcome Hello. anything else do we have any more questions any questions anyone okay then let me thank you for giving me this opportunity Thank you so much, sir. Barry, let us proceed. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This was really an insightful session, and especially the fact that we humans are uh, the users of science and technology, and it's in our hands how we use it. This is such a relevant thing, and especially in today's time. Now, uh, I would like to call upon Ujwala Malvika, the Assistant Chief Organizing Secretary, Spark. to give the vote of thanks malvika over to you i think that there is some technical problem malvika is unable to join is she here no sir You please go ahead. A very good evening to one and all present here. I, A. Ujwala Malavika, am privileged to propose the vote of thanks this evening. With deep sense of appreciation, I am grateful to all who are present here. I would like to thank our chief guest, Professor M. M. Sufyan Beg. our principal sir dr mohammad riyaz sir our convener dr sm yahya ibrahim sir and and i think that uh, she is out of connection yes sir yeah i would uh, carry forward what malvika said i would like to thank our chief guest for such a session our principal sir dr mohammad riyaz for providing us this opportunity uh, sir yaya ibrahim convener spark for helping all of us to organize this event and taking care of it guiding all of us and at last i would like to thank all the teachers and the students who have taken out the time and joined us for this insightful session and at last i would like to remind that tomorrow on 11th of november we have a talk on science and pandemic by dr mohammad moiz ashraf moderator of our science club spark we request a good number of attendants tomorrow as well we expect to see you tomorrow Thank you. Have a good eve. Have a good night. Bahut shukriya sir. Thank you so much.
जी 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 शुक्रिया बहुत 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 इजाजत लेता हूँ मैं आपकी आल टेक शुरू ली इन सर बिल्कुल सर चलिए मोहित भाई आपका डे वन तो हो गया बहुत अच्छा रहा <laughs> बीच में थोड़ा सा डाइवर्ट हो गए थे यूजलेसली लेकिन फिर वापस लौट आए टॉपिक पे अलीगढ़ में ज्यादा चले गए <laughs> हाँ वही बोल रहा है वो जहां तक जहां तक साइंटिफिक सोसाइटी गैजेट उतना उतना ठीक था लेकिन उससे आगे नहीं बढ़ना था उससे आगे यूजलेस था बट ये है कि वापस लौट आए <laughs> ओके कल मुलाकात हो रही है इनशाला नहीं उज्ज्वला मालवी का नो नीड टू फील सॉरी नेटवर्क का प्रॉब्लम तुम्हारे हाथ में या किसी के भी हाथ में नहीं तो उसके लिए वरी करने की जरूरत नहीं मनीष थैंक यू सो मच सब लोगों का बहुत शुक्रिया इजाजत है मनीष भाई जाऊं यस yes, सर <coughs> तुम बोलते भाई कि सर आप कैसे जा सकते हैं आपको तो सबसे लास्ट में डब्बा उब्बा बंद करके जाना है हाँ या, या भाई सॉरी थोड़ा सा चले गए सब्जी बाहर सब्जी लाने गए थे क्या <laughs> <laughs> ठीक है अच्छा हो गया ठीक ठाक हो गया सुना पूरा हाँ। हमने सुना अभी बस थोड़ा ही देर के लिए निकले हम बाहर जस्ट लास्ट में अच्छा बीच में थोड़ा भटक गए थे लेकिन फिर लौट आए थे वो बीच में जो अलीगढ़ चलाना वो ज्यादा कर दिया उन्होंने जहाँ तक वो साइंटिफिक सोसाइटी वगैरह की स्थापना की बात कर रहे थे वहां तक ठीक था उसके बाद जो लगे बताने वो सब वो जरूरत नहीं थी खैर चलिए हाँ होता है हर आदमी का अपना एक तो मनीष ऐसा है ना कि आप फोटोग्राफ शेयर कर दो है ना यस yes, सर और इसका ना तुम, तुम्हारा जो मेल आईडी है उस पर हम ये भेज देंगे इसका वीडियो सो इट शुड बी अपलोडेड ऑन द स्पार्क यूट्यूब चैनल है ना यस yes, सर सर आज अपलोड करना है कि आ, हम लोग कोशिश ये करेंगे कि मतलब आ, ये इंतजार ना करें कि हम लोग पांचों दिन हो जाएगा तभी इकट्ठे करेंगे बेहतर होगा कि हम लोग थोड़ा सा काम अपना हल्का करते चलें सो एज एन वेन इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर यू पीपल तो अपलोड द फर्स्ट वन और इसी सीरीज में करते चले जाएंगे हम अब हम लोग अपलोड सो दैट के सो दैट के बाद में ऐसा ना हो कि एक साथ करना पड़े बहुत सारा अपलोड तो ठीक है यस yes, सर क्योंकि काम बहुत सारा है आपको स्पार्क का भी है स्पार्कलिंग स्पैन का भी इशू है बहुत सारा और फिर उसके बाद डिपार्टमेंट का भी बहुत सारा काम है इसलिए जाम मत करना काम को जाम करोगे तो फिर परेशान हो जाओगे तुम लोग यस सर डे वाइज ट्राई करेंगे कि जितना हो सके अपलोड कर पाए हाँ हाँ बट बट ये हार्ड एंड फास्ट नहीं है आज वाला हम थोड़ी देर के बाद में या कल तुमको मेल कर देंगे सुबह में और फिर जब तुम फ्री रहो तो अपने हिसाब से उसको अपलोड कर देना उसमें कुछ दिक्कत आती है एक बार से पूछ लेना शायद कुछ परमिशन परमिशन का चक्कर होता है एक बार हम तुमको सेंड एक बार हम तुमको सेंड करेंगे यू हैव टू आस्क द परमिशन एंड देन आई परमिट यू एंड देन यू कैन यूज इट ठीक है आपके आपके संख्या भी काफी अच्छी हो गई थी एक बार में तो हंड्रेड प्लस पहुंच गया था फिर बाद में थोड़ा सा इंटरेस्ट लोगों का कम हुआ बट स्टिल इट वाज अ गुड नंबर तो ये सबूत था इट वाज अ प्रूफ दैट द टीम वर्क वेल चाय करने लगे चाय वाय पीने लगे क्या गुड इवनिंग सर हाँ गुड इवनिंग साकेत भाई तुम तो सर रिकॉर्डिंग शायद ऑन ही है अच्छा अरे बाबा मनीष ये सबको एडिट पड़ी सर